The story of BMW's first M car is a wild one. It involves a heist, misappropriation of taxpayer funds, and a racing series that pit F1 drivers against regular customers. Which can mean only one thing. It involved some Italians. Mario Andretti, I saw there in third place, Mario Andretti, the current world champion. A proper bespoke sports racing car, something that would be a real feather in their felt hats. It's a very good car, it's a very big engine. Back in the early 1970s, a man named Bob Lutz was the head of sales for BMW, and he very much believed the Ferrari motto of win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And he felt that this was the best way to push BMW forward and attract more sales. So in 1972, he set up BMW Motorsport, and their entire goal was to put BMW on the map so that people would aspire to drive a race car on a Monday. And throughout the 70s, they did this by funding touring cars. They basically gave sponsorship and upgraded engines and so on to people who wanted to race the BMW CSL. But Bob Lutz had bigger aspirations for this, and he wanted to do something that would really put them on the map. And at first they considered a full Formula One entry, but that would be very expensive and very difficult and also wasn't exactly aligned with selling cars. So then they came up with what was a brilliant idea. They would develop a Formula One V8 and sell it to teams who were already on the grid, which would show the prowess of their engineering, while also putting that engine into a touring car and then allowing Formula One drivers to race it for them in touring car championships, which would then allow them to sell that touring car as a production car and really put BMW on the map. And the idea was simple. Take a roaring V8 engine and put it into a mid-engine supercar. And they came up with the idea but didn't want to build it in-house and therefore got in touch with a company who had just built an incredible mid-engine supercar, the Mura, and contracted out Lamborghini because Lamborghini had Gianpaolo Dallara and they had a lot of faith that they could pull this off. And it would become the E26 9 Series prototype. And then they cancelled the F1 engine. You see, they quickly realized that a V8, thanks to the way the FIA homologates things, would be far too heavy in a touring car. And therefore they scrapped the idea. Sidebar though, they didn't give up on Formula 1 engines completely and actually prototyped a 1.4 litre V6 turbo that would go on to be incredible in the 80s. But that is a story that deserves its own entire video. Instead though, for the touring car, they switched to the straight six from the CSL, but instead of mounting it at 30 degrees, they needed to mount it straight up because otherwise the exhaust would overheat the head and this would cause huge problems. And that meant having to get someone who could design a car that would work around this problem. And there was one man who was perfect for the job, Giorgetto Giugiaro. He designed the car around this engine to work with a tubular frame and be based on the 1972 BMW Turbo concept car. And what he came up with was a thing of beauty. It was absolutely stunning. And they even had a livery ready for it because of a project with Texaco that fell apart but inspired the BMW M logo that we know today. Everything was perfect for three weeks because there was now an issue. You see, Lamborghini was going bankrupt, and this meant that some of the suppliers weren't willing to give over parts for this new BMW M project that Lamborghini were building. And maybe it was all a misunderstanding. You see, all Lamborghini had done was misappropriated funds from the BMW project, as well from taxpayer funds, to build an off-road vehicle hoping to get a military project in the Lamborghini LM001. But that is a story for another video. Yeah, this story contains a lot of big stories. So BMW did the only logical thing to do in this situation, given the fact that their tools, their parts, and their prototype were locked up in the Lamborghini factory with striking workers outside not letting anyone past. They had to send some trucks and break into the factory at night time and steal back, reclaim their parts, which is exactly what they did. 
And now they had their prototype, their designs, their tooling and everything ready. They got some ex Lamborghini engineers who had set up Ital Engineering, as well as Marquez to do the tubular frame. And thankfully, Giorgetto, who had left to set up Ital Design to put the whole project back together again. And they had everything now working. All they needed was a name. And 9 Series, the original name for this project, was not really right because given the way BMW had ranked its cars, 9 Series implied luxury. So the Germans put all of their creative power behind coming up with a perfect name. And they did. They called it the BMW Motorsport 1 because it was the first BMW Motorsport. Creative genius, those Germans. And they finally had a car. Something absolutely incredible. The 3.5 litre straight six that they had bolted in and tuned created 277 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot by today's standards, but it was back then. And on top of that, the chassis design only weighed 1400 kilos, which meant the power to weight ratio was light. And therefore this thing outperformed the Lamborghini Countach and the 512 BB from Ferrari, the two landmark V12 engined supercars of the day. This thing was seriously quick. But then BMW hit another problem. You see, in order to go touring car racing, you needed to produce 400 road cars of your race car in what is known as homologation. And BMW were only able to produce 200 of these a year. So they had to go back to the drawing board once again. And what they came up with was truly incredible. You would think that they were in Grand Prix cars, but the viewer's going to get a bit of a shock here. Well, there's a new series this year. It's called Pro Car Series, and it's very good because the top Grand Prix drivers are going to have the privilege of racing against the most expert GT drivers. Come, I mean, who's a symbol to everybody in motor racing, and to have James and and Mario and John Watson, Alan Jones, to have uh, all of these drivers. Hopefully, you're going to see one of the best races uh, this season. They decided to create their own racing series specifically for the BMW M1 called the BMW M1 Pro Car Championship. And just like any team in F1 would, BMW threw a bag of cash at it and came up with something that turned into just absolutely mind-boggling racing and something I think they should bring back today, which was to make it a Formula One support race and not even that, the top five drivers from free practice on the Friday in Formula One were given BMW M1 cars to go racing and they made a full championship out of it. A ton of the big names in Formula One joined this, including Nicky Lauda, Nelson Piquet, Alan Prost, James Hunt, you name them, they were in these cars. And they raced against privateers who gained a bonus if those privateers could beat the F1 drivers in the race. The first year of the championship was won by none other than Nicky Lauda, and in the second year, Nelson Piquet, no, not that one, his dad, went on to win the championship. One of the race car drivers in the 1980 season you may even be familiar with, yeah, that guy, Helmut Marko. The car itself and the racing series were absolutely incredible. But the problem was the car cost 100,000 Deutschmarks. That was the same price as the Lamborghini Countach. So even when they discounted it down to 90,000 Deutschmarks, it just wasn't a sellable equation given it was a BMW badge. When BMW wasn't a big name in supercars like Lamborghini or Ferrari were. So they ended up selling only 399 of them and the other 54 that were produced were used specifically for motor cars. But it set a standard and it built something incredible. And thanks to that incredible piece of design and engineering, today the M badge is what it is. A badge for people with more money than sense to put on a 3 Series and pretend that they're driving a racing car up the Autobahn. Yeah, subscribe.